The story begins in 1965, after the Scorpion killed Professor Farley Stillwell, the man who created him. J. Jonah Jameson was the one who hired Stillwell to create Scorpion in hopes of taking down Spider-Man, but now, he had blood on his hands, feeling responsible for his death. But Jameson refused to give up and hired another scientist to create a robot, one that he could control from a distance to bring Spider-Man to justice. However, this plan failed as well. He returns home and finds the police waiting for him, but they weren't there to arrest him. Captain Stacy tells him that Scorpion had just escaped from prison and might be coming to kill him, but Jameson says the one they should be worried about is Spider-Man. Even though Spider-Man had saved Jameson several months ago when the Scorpion wanted to kill him, Jameson's hatred for Spider-Man was stronger than ever. He hated him, his quips, his superiority, and his powers. One year later, while Jameson was enjoying a drink inside his New York apartment, he receives a visit from Captain Stacy once again. Stacy tells him that while the Scorpion was in prison, he confessed everything and revealed that Jameson was responsible for his creation. Jameson was immediately arrested, convicted, and sent to prison. Even behind bars, Jameson still blamed Spider-Man, saying that if Spider-Man didn't exist, he wouldn't have done the things he did. His son, John, visits him for the first time since he was imprisoned and tells him he is on leave from work. The last time John went on a spacewalk, he picked up something, a sickness, but Spider-Man saved him. This was the last thing Jameson wanted to hear. He bursts out screaming, saying that Spider-Man is taunting him. He calls his son a true hero who sacrificed his life for his country, while Spider-Man is nothing more than a clown hiding behind a mask. He says that only people with secrets, people doing wrong, wear masks. Like the mugger who killed John's mother, Jameson's wife. His son is heartbroken to see his father so consumed by hatred for Spider-Man and leaves. Ten years pass, and Jameson spends most of his time writing his memoirs, about his life and, of course, about Spider-Man. Norman Osborn becomes his friend, and they both share a common hatred for the man who put them behind bars. Norman sees on the news that Spider-Man killed Peter Parker's wife, Gwen Stacy, filling his heart with even more hatred. Many months later, Peter Parker receives a collect call from prison. It's Jameson, who wants to express his condolences. He offers his support in taking down Spider-Man, but Peter can't believe how much Jameson still hates Spider-Man after all this time. Peter tells Jameson to let go of the past and move on, saying that Spider-Man is just a man. Another 14 years pass, and Jameson is much older now. He and other inmates attend group meetings with the prison's psychiatrist, including Norman Osborn, who is set to be released the following week. Jonah says all of them were put behind bars by superheroes, masked vigilantes who take the law into their own hands, yet somehow, they are the ones in prison. Dr. Helen Carroll, the psychiatrist, tells him that while superheroes put the others in prison, Jameson put himself in prison, and only he can let go of the anger. Jameson spends the next three years serving his sentence while continuing to write his memoirs. One day, the psychiatrist visits him with bad news. Norman Osborn passed away from a heart attack. He was found dead in his home, surrounded by the Green Goblin's artifacts. Carol is disappointed, believing she was helping the inmates move on from their past. But after Norman was released, he went right back to his old ways. She hands Jameson a letter, saying it was part of Norman's dying will. Six more years pass, and Jameson is finally set free. He opens the letter from Osborn, which contains an address. He drives to an abandoned warehouse and opens the door, shocked to see what was inside. Norman had left him a power suit, hoping Jameson would use it to take down Spider-Man, something Norman couldn't do after being released. Jameson reflects that he is a selfish, stubborn man, quick to anger, but above all, he is a good man. He takes Osborne's suit, but instead of using it to take down Spider-Man, he goes after the Scorpion, saying that J. Jonah Jameson fixes his mistakes. It seems that all that time in prison had changed him. He had a lot of time to reflect on his life, especially on the call he had with Peter Parker. He realizes that Peter lost everything, but it wasn't Spider-Man's fault. Spider-Man was just a man. After being set free, he is determined to correct his biggest mistake, but Scorpion is still strong and pins Jameson to the ground. Scorpion attacks him with his sharp tail, trying to crack his armor and stab him in the face. However, Jameson manages to grab the tail and turn it against Scorpion, stabbing him in the chest. The Scorpion falls, a victim of his own weapon, and Jameson has fulfilled his vow to correct his mistake. He gets out of the suit and reflects that his memoir is finally finished, his life story. But perhaps it's too late. Suddenly, he feels chest pains and falls to the ground, clutching his heart. He is having a heart attack but manages to speak his last words. I'm sorry. Not many people attend his funeral. Jameson didn't have many friends. But one person still remembers him, Peter Parker. Peter watches from a distance when the psychiatrist, Helen Carroll, introduces herself. Peter recognizes her. 
Helen Carroll is actually a clone of Gwen Stacy, who disappeared a long time ago after the real Gwen Stacy was killed. Carol volunteered to work at the prison to help people obsessed with Spider-Man, including Jameson. She says that, towards the end, Jameson was a changed man and shows Peter the book Jameson wrote in prison, a book about a man obsessed with Spider-Man who lost everything but managed to find himself in the end. Helen says that Jameson wanted Spider-Man to have the book, but Peter says he isn't Spider-Man any longer. However, Carol, with all of Gwen Stacy's memories, knows Peter Parker too well. She knows that he always keeps a Spider-Man mask in his pocket, 